Hello, welcome to the Jazz Ranch, Hip Cats, Groovy Chicks, and Finger Poppin' Daddies. I'm going to be talking about the concept of the motive. Now, what's your motive for watching this video? That's a question. But I'm going to be talking about motive as it's used in music. Now, it's defined as a leading phrase or figure that is reproduced and varied through the course of a composition or movement. So it's an important phrase that is very memorable, and it's often repeated sometimes transposed, sometimes varied rhythmically and so on. So in this particular specific case, I'm not going to give you a number of examples from different songs, but I'm going to talk about one particular composition. And it's written by Herbie Hancock, and it's from his iconic album called Maiden Voyage, and the name of the song is Dolphin Dance. So I'm going to be talking about the motive. Now there's actually three motives in this song, which I'm going to break down for you later on. But there's one central motive, and it's played a number of times in the course of the melody of the song. So I'll let you guess how many times, and then write to me. But I, before that, uh, before I play it, I want to give you a few quotes by Herbie Hancock. Interesting quotes. The first one is this. I think there's a great beauty to having problems. That's one of the ways we learn. And I agree with that. In other words, a problem is something that you have to solve and it's a way that you learn something in the way you progress. So don't look at it as a problem. <laughs> don't look at problems as being a problem necessarily. They may be an opportunity. Uh, second quote is this. Forget about trying to compete with someone else. Create your own pathway. Create your own new version and your own new vision. So be yourself. Don't try to copy someone. It is important to imitate and learn from someone else, but have your own voice, find, find your own sound, and be yourself. That's the point there. Now, the last quote is about a teacher, and I like this. He says, a great teacher stimulates his students' creativity enough so that they go out and find the answers themselves. So, that's a very good point and that's what I try to do it's what I'm trying to do with you to stimulate your creativity so you go out there and find the answers yourself you know I had to go out I had to um, self-study I did have teachers but I went out and went out into the world and went to jam sessions I listened to recordings I went out and heard live performances I sat in with musicians and uh, jam sessions and I learned how to play that way as well as from teachers, so that's important. So now here we go with a great song. I'm going to play it for you first, and then I'm going to talk about it and the concept of the motive. Here we go with Dolphin Dance.
Welcome. Now I want to explain the concept of the motive as used in music and I'm going to be using the song Dolphin Dance which I just played and there's actually three motives in this song. That There's one central motive and you hear it right at the beginning in the first measure. We start out in E flat major. Now I should point out that this song um, is not diatonic. It's not, it, it starts out in E flat but it doesn't play chords it doesn't stay in the key of E flat playing E flat chords, you know, within the scale tone sevenths. After four measures, it moves into the relative minor of E flat, which is C minor, and then it modulates into G major. So it starts out in three flats, and then on the ninth measure, it's in one sharp. And then it's back to C minor, which would be three flats, and then it's back to G major, which is one sharp. And then it does a series of things in which it um, plays on pedal tones, which are bass notes that repeat, and it stays on one bass note for a number of bars, four bars of G and then four bars of F. And then it starts this progression, which is ascending through the cycle of fifths up to C sharp and the two five into B minor. So the third key you're really in is, is B minor, or actually you could call it the fourth key. You're in E flat and C minor which is one key then you're in G major which is another key of course and then and then eventually in B minor which is like the key of D two sharps so here we go now the motive first motive that starts on the E flat is this so it's a rising line in eighth notes those are all eighth notes now starts on the third of the chord thir three four five two so it ascends up the scale and then down a fourth to the two now that phrase it goes E flat to B flat minor okay then back to E flat then down a half step D minor seven flat five to G seven which takes us to the relative minor of C minor now it repeats the same phrase on C minor but it varies the rhythm of it, it goes and it plays that note twice so it's you know it's like having a conversation which you repeat yourself and then you make a new statement but it's similar in other words it leads one leads to the other leads to leads to this and then you see so you hear that mode of one four times in the first eight measures and then it's progressing into another key after that descending down to A minor. Now, important thing to understand here is that melody note is the 11th. So it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You see it's the 11th step of the scale above the A minor. Because you're going to hear that 11th appear a number of times in this song. Now, here's the next. Now we're, we modulate it into G major. And here's the ne next motive, which is motive number 2. Here it is. Then that repeats up a third like this. You see that works nicely because it stays on that last note, which is the 11th again, right? It goes G major, A flat minor, D flat to F minor, but that is the 11th of the F minor. Then it stays on there, on that note, and it goes to an A minor again, A minor 7 with that note is the eleventh. Takes us back to G again. Now, motive number one. This time, the same, starting on the third, as it did at the beginning, was the third of the chord. But now, we're not going to the, the, the five, we're not doing that, we're doing this. We're staying on G. So this becomes a pedal tone. Now what is that? That just means that the bass is staying on that G bass note. It's pedaling on it. It just stays on it. Which creates a, a kind of an effect of um, stopping the forward movement of the music. Rather than the bass walking and you're swinging, you're kind of hovering, you know, in this space. Which is uh, really pretty. G sus, then this A with the G in the bass. The G sus again, then down the whole step. Repeating 
This is like the beginning again, but with different chords, but it's the same melody. You know, you hear it? But then, then, it ascends there instead of, instead of going down. It goes up, you see? So, he's using mo motive number one, he's changing it slightly, and it's on, on um, different part of the chord. So here it's on the third, then here it is on the root. Then on the F, it's on the seventh. Very clever. Then this, to there, the E minor, just down a half step um, in the chords, but to an E minor, to a two five. And there's that 11th again, you see? So that's an important central issue, is that he's hitting these 11ths. And that's another thing that creates the glue that holds it together. You know, one phrase leads to the next. He's really telling a story here that makes sense. But now the next chord is a surprise. You're expecting a D minor, but no, it goes, it's very interesting. It goes, it stays on that note, but it goes to an E flat. Now here's motive number three. So here's a new idea, okay? And it's repeated up a whole step. Like that. So there's a new idea. So this is more, and if the chord is E flat to A minor. And there's that 11th again. Two five takes us ascending up to a C sharp minor seven for that. And there's the 11th again. And there's your climax of the song, the highest note and the most unusual chord, the C-sharp minor. Then this figure, a new idea. Be beautiful climactic point in the song. And then resolving to B minor. So it's 2-5, two 2-5, five, two five, A minor, D7 up a whole step, 2-5, B minor, E7 up a whole step, C-sharp minor, F-sharp, seven altered to get to the B minor. Now we're on B minor. So this is our fourth key. We've been in E flat major to start, then in the relative minor, which is C minor, then modulating the G major, then back to C minor, then back to G major, and then those two pedal tone zones of G and F, and then the ascending two fives, A minor, D, mi D7, B minor, E7, C sharp minor, F sharp, seven taking us to B minor so now we're in in B minor and we're on a pedal tone again you see so he separates the two pedal tone zones with a swinging section that has those rising rising two fives so this is very interesting to improvise on because you have these pedal tone areas these zones in which you can be more lyrical or play more chordal kind of things not be swinging so hard and then you have these sections where the bass is going to be the drummer and the bass are going to be really swinging and you're going to play swinging lines and then more pensive thing and more like you know sitting or hovering I like to think of it as the pedal tone you're hovering in a space in a separate space which is very interesting you can play more lyrically so I hope I did that when I when I did my performance of this but you end up after B minor. He, how does he get back to the beginning of the song? Well, it goes down a half step, which is very easy to do, you know, because, you no, know, and he goes down a half step to the B flat minor, and now he can play uh, mo motive one again, like this, but starting on the ninth. There, and then this. ends up on the C minor. So he's actually ending up on the fifth measure of the song. So those first four measures of the song are not repeated, except for the fact that they're repeated at the end, but it's a B flat minor, not an E flat major. You know, remember went to E flat major to B flat minor, it's just B flat minor, but it's there, you see, and then two five into C minor so he's figured this out in a, in a beautiful way it's very clever and it ends up being 38 measures now this is not a song you're gonna whistle or, or sing along sing along to 
necessarily, although it is very lyrical, those motives are memorable, all, each, each of them. And the fact that he repeats them on different scales or different chords is a, a wonderful, clever, ingenious composition and very memorable and very beautiful. So, hope you enjoyed this, hope you learned this song, write to me, um, tell me how you like it, and if you want to learn more about the improvisation, then write to me as well. So, I'll sign off, and here's the sign off. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch, thanks so much for joining me on this adventure with the song Dolphin Dance by Herbie Hancock. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will learn this song and you will like playing it. So please write to me. I love to hear from you. I always try to answer all my emails and comments. So in the words of Hermie Dressel, my great friend upstairs, he's still riding his horse <laughs> and he's saying, swing loose and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.